Viewer discretion is advised. Boom, perfect timing. No. You are being detained. Stop. Sir, put your mask. I'll put the mask. Put your mask. There's no legislation that's on this. Back off. Back off right now. Back off. Why are you going to put the mask on? Either you she's going to put it on for you or I'm going to put it on for you. Hold on. If the mask works, if the mask works, if the Listen. I stop you. talking. Listen I what I have you. to say. I I can take you to jail right now if I want to. Can I do it? Right? Have your mouthy ass well, wife. Pull it up for you. Touch her. Don't you put your hands on yes, this you officer did. because you will go to jail yes, and did. that's a felony. You Don't you touch her. Why are you lying? Don't you touch her. Why are you lying? I didn't touch her. After a day at the pool, Sean Whitfield and Leah Hops had just finished up dinner and were window shopping on Duval Street. Both of their cell phones had died earlier in the evening, which is why neither of them could record the incident. The body cam footage shows the couple nowhere near any other bystanders on the street and Mr. Whitfield holding a drink in his hand. Two Key West police officers, Officer Jorge Mayorga Lopez and Officer William Howell, along with a code compliance officer, Sophia Doktosh, were on the other side of the street, walking in the opposite direction, when they stopped and targeted the couple. The officers would demand the couple put on masks. After a heated verbal exchange, Officer Lopez decides to place Mr. Whitfield under arrest. My name is Sean Whitfield, I'm from Utica, Illinois. There. <laughs> Leah Hoppus and um, we work a husband and wife even though I have a different last name and we own a small business a marketing a digital marketing agency so Lee and I one of the things that we do when we, I think it was only our second day there wasn't it mm -hmm. uh, we were kind of tired just from flying you know decompressing the first day rather than going all the way back to where we were staying we decided to just go out to dinner we finished dinner I went to the rum bar and so you'll see that I have a drink in my hand and so I heard somebody yell what you see on the camera, they were actually yelling really loud. I didn't know they were yelling at us. I thought they were yelling at somebody else. And I'm like, we're not even by anybody. And I got a drink in my hand. They're not going to clearly stop. I'm, I'm literally physically drinking something. They were telling me to put up my mask. And never once did I say, I have a drink in my hand. How am I going to drink with my mask up? And I should have said that is the only thing I didn't actually probably bring up. But anyways, they were just looking for it. There's this. We have a city ordinance in the city of U.S. about the face mask. But the we governor, are in, we are the governor. In, it doesn't matter what the governor said. Okay. Ma'am. Ma'am. I'll just take a ticket. Okay. All right. Ma'am. You're gonna write me a ticket? Yes, I am. Let me, may I see your ID, please? You can write me a ticket. Yes, I am. Can I tell you to go away? You can write me a ticket. I just want. You can't write me a ticket. Stop right there. You are being detained. Stop. Sir, I'm not stop. Listen, we were following statutes that were coming down. And so DeSantis said there was no mat. You couldn't find anybody for being on the street for a mat. So I didn't think in a million years that somebody would false arrest me. I like that's the last thing I thought. So when I got in that little bit of confrontation with them, I'm like, okay, I'm protected by the Fourth Amendment, protected by the First Amendment. Pretty much say and do what I want as long as.
long as I'm not doing anything physical to them. Howl, and this is what you don't see, smacks the drink out of my hand. I'm usually very respectful to authority. I just, in general, it's my demeanor. It's my personality. I try not to make other people's day bad or my day bad. But when that guy started doing this, I turned into that kid that was like in high school that just rebels. And I did not want to deal with the shit that I was dealing with. I'm on vacation. I'm on the street. I have a fucking fishing mask. I'm not doing anything to anybody. Stop. I'm not doing anything to anybody. Stop. Stop. I will put the face mask. Can I put the face mask up? Okay, you can tell that to the judge. Okay. I don't I don't really I'm, I'm care serious, what guys. Says. Listen, I served in the Marine Corps. Okay, so I like it. Listen. Okay, I know but still, put your mask on. My right. I don't want to talk to you. It's not against your rights. Sir, put your mask up. You're still not wearing the mask. Ma'am, please put your mask up. The last time I'm going to ask you. Are you done? No, I'm not done. You're not done. Here, I can't take it off. You're ignorant and... Really? Yes, really. Really? Really. My civil liberties are ignorant. You're ignorant. You're back. Put your hands behind your back. You You're going to arrest me for now. Multiple times stop you. you decided to walk away from a police officer. I was not. That's resisting without no, violence. I was no, not. I was not resisting. Stop. You don't even I know what you're talking about. Yeah. It's a city order. 8-5, I'm with him. There's, there's no law on the books. There's no, no legislation. You can't, you can't there's find. There's no legislation that's on this. You can only find. And I wasn't running from you. Okay. You can only find. I wasn't stopping you. You decided to walk away. You said you didn't have to. You cannot find citizens. Sure, absolutely. We understand our laws. You look like an attorney. Yes, you did. I have an attorney. You look like an attorney. You can insult me all you want. That doesn't mean you get to violate my civil liberties. If a police officer tells you to stop, you stop. I fought for the United States and the fucking Marine Corps. I fought for this country. Okay, but that doesn't give you the right to walk away from a police officer. I understand, and I give you respect. Now you understand? I give you respect. You don't have to yell. I give you respect. My You're talking is, over me. That's why I have to be loud. And now my mask is falling off my face. Back off. Back, 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 back off right now. I have not. Back off. You have nothing to back off of. Back off. You have nothing better to do than harass citizens minding their own business. Ma'am, listen. It's a city ordinance. We're doing our job. It's, it's a like second the degree. It's not it's stop. legislation. The state. It's not a it law. It violates the governor's order. It's not a law. That, where is it in the law? You don't have I'm not arguing. Where is it in the law? Sir, I'm well, not arguing. You can't argue. You know it's not a law. Do not court, touch right? me, please. Sir, first don't off, touch first off, don't touch I'm not me. taking I'm whatever not shit off. you have home to don't, my pregnant wife. Don't touch me. So, Why are you you're going to put the mask on. Then? Either she's going to put it on for you or I'm going to put it on for you. And she's going to be a hell of a lot nicer than I am. If the mask put it on. If the mask put it on for him. Then why do you worry about it? Put it on for him. Put it on for I have it on. It fell off. Thank you. Just starting with Officer Lopez, how would you describe him? What was his demeanor and what was he like during the interaction? Just a total, just total tyrant. Like, I'm smarter than you. You're an idiot citizen. I mean, talk about somebody acting like they knew more, they were better than. It was escalating, provoking, you know, like Officer Howell certainly provoked Sean when he knocks the drink out of it. Lopez was right there. Um, aggressive. Uh, just very aggressive, aggressive the whole time. Loud, you know, just, again, escalating everything. Code enforcer, Doc Tosh, so aggressive. Escalating, you know, I mean, there was no nothing about hey guys can you just do this for us i yes. thought yeah i actually thought she was the worst of the three of mm -hmm. them again it was stupid like how, you're not even a police officer and yet you're like coming at me and so i think part of my brain was like okay this explains a little <laughs> bit of her unprofessionalism i felt like i was on the stage that it was like jerry springer show ish like i felt the whole time that it was this stage. show so are you gonna uncuff him I'm deciding whether or not I would take him to jail for resisting with my violence. Man. I'm a law. Listen, I stop you. talking. Listen I what I have you. to say. Listen. Okay. That's fine. You we'll not see. following verbal commands from a police officer, that's an uh, a chargeable offense. I I can take you to jail right now if I want to. Yeah, I can all day long. Do I do I really wanna do that to somebody who is here on vacation? No. I have no intention whatsoever. But you, demeanor, your your actions are putting you in the spot right now. Not mine. I was trying to educate you about the city ordinance and you decided to walk away. It's still not legislation.
is all I'm saying. This never went Thank before. Thank you. So do you need his ID as well? I do, ma'am. Do you need his ID? Yes. If they are going to arrest him, then yeah. Uh, it's in my backpack, Leah. They can decide what they well, want. Well, you said you needed I'll, mine I'll for the... I'll take care of you, and they can arrest you. I don't know. Well, I don't know where... This is what we are going to do. This is what we're going to do. I I understand now that you understand the fact that what you did was wrong. Okay. A police officer telling you, giving you verbal commands, and you deciding to walk. You get that now, right? Don't you? Yes, sir. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do right now. I will give you a civil citation for not having your face mask after I told you to put it on. Okay. You're going to go home and enjoy your vacation. I am not going to take you to jail for resisting without violence because I gave you multiple yes, verbal commands. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, do you have the court date? Is it the January 27th. Okay. Do you need this? Is your ID in here? Yeah, I don't know where it is. It should be in there if it's not. You want you want it right? Yeah. Because this actually fell underneath the Santa's right now with okay. the order that's we'll going on. Thank right. you, ma'am. That guy's mask is below his nose. We can only handle one at a time. I don't have. Uh, Thank you. I only Code, have two Code hands. Is hiring, and we're actually hiring for police officers if you would like to apply. Yeah, no, to okay. the people around you aren't working. Okay, well, you, there's Guess what? Everybody left. listens. Okay. This is the first time in six hours that I have to deal with something like this today. Six hours. You also don't have your mask on still. It keeps well, looking have your wife. You can undo my have calls. your mouthy ass well, wife. So that's when it went Jerry Springer for sure. Because <laughs> I was like, I heard that line actually, I think, on the Jerry Springer show at <laughs> one time. And dude, I was just like, Are you fucking kidding me that you're talking to a private citizen this way? Because you're you a deputy. Yeah. You say you're gonna talk about my wife that way. I think he says yeah. something. And so and to me it was I don't know that that it stood out any more at the time than, than any else. of the other chaos that was going so on. They were I'm just like, assholes straight okay. up. Okay, I mean, yeah. like, I'm not, again, I'm not, like, you're not going to get to me by calling me names. Like, that's not a way to get under my skin, so it didn't work. They were really trying to get somebody to overreact, and listen, everything had an intention. And when you yeah. look at it, it's clear what the intention was, and that was to arrest somebody for some fraudulent shit because they didn't agree with the way that we thought about wearing a mask 60 feet away on the other side of the street drinking a drink. And then ego came in, right? So then once you bruise somebody's ego and I didn't kiss the ring, yeah, yeah. Mouthy ass wife. Yeah. You're really going to talk about my wife like Yeah, she, I like how you're mouthy. Just she's mouthy because of the fact yeah, that she actually know. knows her rights. Guys, please, guys, please stop. Please stop. Guys, please stop. Please stop. Please stop. She insulted us, dude. Please stop. What's your phone number? And how many times have you insulted them? Uh, 555. 555. 555. I mean, sir, we can leave the cuffs okay. on and just put you in the back of the patrol car. He's going to take a two. You didn't ask for my phone. Why are you asking for my phone number? Because it needs to go in here on this she civil citation so you I can go I home. He's a, he's a police officer. He's fine. You fooling with me, that's not going to get you anywhere know, but jail. I know. I'm just frustrated, man. I'm the one who's Do you understand? I fought for this country and I have to wear a face mask. But you know so You're much, forcing man. something you on me that is not human. You tell me to ask me for my phone number. Join the club, boss. Join the club. Join the club. The tension is times. We're going to go to jail with No, come on. 815. I'll give you my number. 815. Last time. I'm not taking anything else. Dude, and I won't. I am giving you a huge I know, you are, you are being close, so I know you're hard. I don't need your phone number. No, not, not that one, not ignorant. No, I wasn't being that way. Ma'am, she is cold. 815. We're going to, uh, is that your car? No, no I wasn't being that way. Is that way. Your car? No, no, I didn't mean it that way. Oh, my God. Of course you're not talking to me, because you look, you look above me when you're below me. Wow. Sorry, Sophie. Are you looking? What am I going to jail for? Okay, so this is your phone number. Okay, so this is your I didn't resist anything, guys. I didn't resist a damn thing. When you were finally arrested, because it mm -hmm. seemed like Officer Lopez was going to just let you go with the ticket. So and, there's two comments. Yeah. I was trying to actually compliment him, but it came out wrong because sometimes my brain gets jumbled. And so when I was trying to give him a compliment, well, I can hear a small a hard ass or something I said. And I still, I can't even repeat it. It just, it, I was kind of <laughs> bitch slapping him, but I really wasn't. I was trying to give him, but anyways, um, it blew up in my face. And then after that, I decided to give him the 555 five, five number because I'm like, 
like, you don't need my phone number. There's, there's nothing. What are you, you write me the damn ticket. You don't need my phone. Are you going to call me? I don't know. It, you know? Well, and that's not uh, a requirement because yes. they didn't ask yeah. me for my phone number and they'd already given me my ticket. I already had that. Come on. Ladies, please put your face mask on. Yeah, Come on. I'm wearing, I'm wearing a cloth on my face. Ma'am. Ma'am, I'm only going to ask you one more time to put your mask on. Put your mask on. Take me, yeah, put your mask on. No, we're taking you to jail because you resisted, sir. Oh, come on, guys. I did not resist anything. Uh, no. Oh, my bad. You don't know. you put your hands on yes, this you officer did. because you will go to jail. That's a felony. Why are you lying? Don't you touch her. Don't you touch her. You want to invest in my phone and push it. Don't you do that. She's yes, a code enforcement officer and you can go to jail. Would you stop squeezing my arm, please? I'm not doing anything. Did you not have this ID? No, I cannot. Stay away. What am I supposed to do? Ma'am, I've already told you. Put your mask on. Ma'am, I've already told you. Put your mask on. Once they start marching him down the street in handcuffs, my brain can't process this. I don't know where they're taking him. They're not telling me. Code enforcer Doc Tosh is like following me. And she's really, she at least seems very close. And part of it is because I have his backpack, my beach bag, and she, it feels like she's like right on top of. And so she's got the camera and you see that in some of the footage. And <clears throat> she says something about him resisting arrest. And I'm like, uh, no, he wasn't. And I hold up, I, cause I turn back towards her to address her. And I hold up my finger like this, which is when I, I talk to my hands a lot, which she's is what like I do. right there. Yes. <laughs> But you even see my my wave is already, it's not going into her. I'm already moving away from her because I want to get away from her. What am I supposed to do? Go ahead, keep her. Yeah, put your mask on. He did not resist. He did not resist. Yeah, he did. Uh, no, he didn't. Yeah, he did. Yep. In the entire exchange, you'll see she's got me backing up. She was provoking me the entire time. And so what they did was she, she stopped recording and took a picture of my hand when she saw my hand come up. And that's what they took before a judge to get a warrant claiming that I battered her. What the attorneys told me was the charge was the equivalent as if I had punched her in the face or another officer. That's what I was charged with. And all they had was a picture of my hand. Yeah. Sean Whitfield would be arrested and charged with Florida Penal Code 843.02, resisting officer without violence to his or her person. The code compliance officer, Sophia Doktosh, would give Leah Hops a civil citation for refusing to wear a mask, but would allow Mrs. Hops to leave the scene. On December 7, 2020, five days after the incident, Officer William Howell, with the help of Code Compliance Officer Sophia Doktosh, would write a sworn arrest affidavit against Mrs. Hops, citing she violated Florida Penal Code 784.07, battery of a code inspector while performing duties, which is a felony. Leah Hops explained to me that she was never notified about there being a warrant out for her arrest and was shocked when the news was finally revealed to her. After learning about her arrest warrant, Leah Hops would turn herself in to the Monroe County Sheriff's Office. Yeah, so this even gets more interesting. So I hire an attorney. This is where we discovered some things. This, okay, so the whole event happened December 2nd. And we were proceeding with his case just thinking, you know, shoot, it could have been worse, right? And then at the end of February, I get a letter from the Illinois State Police. And I'm excited, assuming it was going to be my CCL license that I had applied for previous July. So I'm all excited. I open it up and it's saying my FOIT card had been revoked, which is the firearms owner's identification card. And it says because you're under indictment for a felony of battery to an officer. 
like you get something like this. And I, you know, the most I've ever had is a speeding ticket in my life. So I'm immediately thinking there's somebody else with my name, right? The Illinois state police have screwed up. So I'm emailing, I'm calling, of course I get nobody. And I'm just saying, you've got the wrong person. And then we call our brother-in-law who used to be a cop in South Florida. And we're telling him, we're going, this is really weird. And he looks up something that he had access to and said, okay, there's a case here, Leah, that says confidential. That means there's a warrant out for your arrest. Like what? So he calls his attorney, Trish Gibson, and she knew about it because it was attached to my case. So this is what Trish tells me on the phone. I'm like, Trish, you're not going to tell me that my wife has a felony. She goes, you know, Sean, people get arrested all the time in keys in groups. They're friends. They go down. One guy acts stupid. The other guy acts stupid. They both get arrested. I'm representing that one client. I said, Trish, it's my fucking wife. You didn't tell me my wife had a warrant out for her arrest. You didn't tell me she had a felony charge against her. I said, how can you say you're representing me and you're not representing my wife? We're in this together. I said, I want my money back. Your political views have gotten in the way of our case. And I called her out on it. You never get money back from an attorney. I got a thousand dollars back. Yeah. So she backed out after I called her out on that shit. We had had talked to several different attorneys um, during this whole process of firing her and every single one of them, I don't know, three, five, three to five, every single one of them said, absolutely. She should have told you. So we ended up hiring his name's Alan Fowler. I still, you have to understand, I trust none of these attorneys. They're all close to each other. Now they were passed military, I had a better sense that they were actually had our best interest, that they were actually just going to to fight for us in general. And the reason why I was so adamant with my attorneys and a little disappointed we didn't get the the body cam footage of Officer Howell sooner. Oh, man. And again, playing games with that. And this is why we also don't thoroughly trust any attorney down there, because why couldn't we get that sooner? Like, isn't that critical piece of evidence? I asked for that from the original attorney, Trish. I asked for that footage. And the only one they got me was Lopez. But then Howell, they never got me that footage. And I kept asking and asking. Finally, I was like, listen, guys, I don't think you got my best interest in mind. I need that footage. Then it was, oh, well, recorded, but we lost it. Do you know how many times they say that? Like, oh, the file's corrupted or whatever they said. And then finally it showed yeah, up. Yeah, he never got it. I never got it. And case. I wanted it for mine because it shows Officer Howell knocking that drink out of my hand. Yep. Because then that's assault against me. So it took a year and a half because I didn't get this until a year ago last July and the charges were just dismissed this past December. So it took a year and a half for them to give us this evidence, which was the body cam footage of Officer Howell, which shows later after this alleged incident, you see me up against the building. She's right here to my left showing me her phone saying, see, this is where you hit me. They would have had me on the ground with with their knees on a head, right? Yeah. If that had happened. Me and your Clearly there was no threat because she was standing there talking to me about it. And you hear me see, and you see me go, that's a picture of my hand. I'm being extremely that's patient fine. with you. We'll the the that's fine. You didn't I'm touch me, ma'am? Office. You didn't I touch me? Touch you. you didn't touch me. Ma'am. That's my oh, finger in ma'am. the camera picture. Ma'am, I didn't please, touch you. Ma'am, please walk away. I will walk away. Thank you. Dude when I found out these charges were filed against me, I mean, like this was just, it was so devastating. My attorney told me they felt strongly that they would be able to dismiss Officer Howell's testimony because what he said in that arrest warrant, there was no evidence to. In Officer Howell's own words, Mrs. Hopps purposefully slapped code compliance officer Doc Tosh's work cell phone into her chest while she was engaged in her legal lawful duties as a uniformed code compliance officer. He would email the documents to the assistant district attorney, Kelly Dugan, who would email him back with her approval. When looking over Officer Howe's written sworn arrest affidavit, a few discrepancies in his version of the timeline are immediately discovered. Now, this might all just be speculation, but it's an important point that I think needs to be brought up. Intentionally or unintentionally, Officer Howe would lie about when Code Compliance Officer Doc Tosh had informed him and Officer Lopez of the alleged battery. He writes that it was not until after they had already allowed Mrs. Hopps to leave the scene that he knew of the alleged battery. 
The issue with that is, is well, it's not true. In the body cam video, we hear code compliance officer Doktosh claiming she was battered well before Mrs. Hobbs ever left the scene. I, I didn't touch her. Don't you put your hands on yes, this you officer did. because you were going to jail and that's did. a felony. Don't you lie? You don't you why are you lying? Her. Don't you touch her? Why are you lying? Her. I didn't touch her. My question is, if code compliance officer Doktosh was really battered as she claims she was, then why wasn't Ms. Hoppus arrested on the spot? Mrs. Hoppus has always denied the officer's claims, and as I mentioned in part 1, in both her case and her husband's case, all of the charges were dismissed. They also did not have to pay any of the citations that these officers issued them, as the couple were right all along about the governor of Florida's executive order. Leah Hoppus would later reveal to me that her case in court kept getting continued over and over again until charges finally being dismissed in December of 2022, meaning Mrs. Hoppus had a felony charge on her record for over two years before this agency and or prosecutor decided to finally dismiss dismiss the charges. I think for me, I was the, yeah, back the blue, you know, and even though I've heard stories, you know, never, probably never took the time. I mean, being completely honest of delving any further and, you know, and I've heard stories and my heart breaks for those, but it was never anything that close to me. And so, yes, I've stopped liking the Facebook posts or back the blue because I'm like, mm, no, mm -hmm. not going to do it. There no. is so much corruption. So much and, corruption. I, and listen, and what I'm realizing now is there always has been. I'm just now waking up to it. Right. And I've really appreciated your work and seeing the, your other stories and going, holy cow. I mean, the, the stories are insane. And our friends, a big thing about being able to share the video that you did is, you know, we told a lot of people about what happened to us. And, you know, in the back of their minds, when they were hearing the story, they're like, just put up the mask. Well, or <laughs> they're, they're leaving out right. something. Yeah, right. They're making oh, those yeah, cops yeah. sound worse than they really are. We know Leah and Sean, like, you know, I know. Well, now that we've showed them your part one, we're getting so much more of that. Wow like you said it but now that i see it right and that's why it's so yeah. important to do what you do because now it's a chance for more people like me who just well, kind of oblivious you don't see those things that are happening yeah i'm a little jaded <laughs> but i'm also more aware of that shit really goes on like holy shit this really happened